Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Friday, June 2nd. Yeah. I really wanted to make this video earlier in the day, but I was just so busy today. I didn't get around to it. But actually, it's a good thing that I'm doing it now because I had time um, to really reflect and, and look at a lot of things. But today was a combination of, I thought, just irony and comedy. And the reason is we had a very strong uh, payroll number of 339K that was much higher than what the forecast uh, were on that. And you would think, and first of all, that, that reinforces what I've been saying for so long, that the economy is going to stay strong precisely because of the Fed rate hikes. Now, you know, for over a year, we've had all the big shots on Wall Street and the media saying there's going to be a recession in 2023. And you know that yours truly right here, how many times have I been saying since late last year and this year, I've been saying there's going to be no recession in 2023 unless we hit the debt ceiling and they don't get that resolved. I always had that as a qualifier, but I said as long as the debt ceiling gets uh, resolved, the amount of monthly leading spending flows by the government now, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And a lot of that is now coming from the addition of interest, uh, interest income transfers. I mean, May, <laughs> the month of May ended up with like a 680 billion, 678 billion leading spending flow month. Now, okay, we got a 50 billion quarterly interest payment in May. So, but even if you subtract that out, I mean, we're running at like 600 billion a month. I mean, that is, that's huge, man. It's huge. But the irony and the, and the comedy of this is that where were the, um, the monetarist zombies today? That's my question. I mean, where were they? In the past, every time we had a strong economic data release, they would sell the market like crazy because for them, that was the trigger. It meant that, hey, now the Fed's going to raise rates even more. And today we had that and they were just non-existent. They were not around. I shouldn't say they were non-existent. They were covering their shorts. I don't know if that guy even, uh, how's that guy, Mike Wilson at uh, Morgan Stanley, the big perma bear, is doing because, you know, just it was a couple of weeks ago, he said, don't worry. You know, this thing's going back down at least 20%. I don't know, frankly, I have to say, I don't know how you can be like a major, um, tra uh, 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 you know, investment strategist or economist at a major Wall Street firm if you don't understand MMT or if you dismiss MMT out of hand. If you don't understand that, and all of these guys are in that position, they're all in that position, okay? And I mean, so for me, it's kind of comical because now, you know, it's obviously for them, it's obvious for them, it's something's wrong, something's wrong. You know, we've had nine, we're gonna have 10 rate hikes now. Uh, for them, they've been saying for so long, that's absolutely positively gonna create a recession and the market's gonna tank, and it's gonna be a bear market, and the market just keeps going up. This reminds me a lot of like the, the, the mid-1990s. Uh, we're having a big thunderstorm here, so if you hear rumbling in the background, usually you hear ambulances here, but if you hear rumbling, that's uh, thunder and lightning. But it reminds me a little bit of the mid-1990s when, at, oh, there, there's the ambulance. When, so we got the thunder out of the ambulance. It reminds me a little bit of the mid 90s when Greenspan was raising interest rates. Ooh, that was a big one. And, um, you know, everybody was jitterish and, and th saying, you know, that's it, we're going to go in a recession. And then all of a sudden along came the whole Y2K, you know, the, the, the change in the millennium. And that 
uh, triggered a lot of business and capital investment for firms to you know switch their computer systems over to be able to handle that. And then we had the internet, which came along, which caused this explosion, which we all know went to the dot com. We call it a bubble, but actually, what popped the bubble was Clinton's policy of turning the U.S. Uh, government's, the federal government's budget into a surplus. That was the brilliant idea that idiot Dick Morris, who, um, I mean, I used to bump into him so many times when I was at Fox, the guy's a slob. But I mean, <laughs> anyway, so anyway, where were, where were the monetarist zombies today? They were nowhere to be seen because they were running for cover in the market. And that's, I guess, partially the reason we, we went up so high today was big time short covering. But now like they're looking for another excuse and the other excuse uh, that they're looking at now that I've been reading or hearing about is like, well, you know, now that they uh, raised the deficit, that means Treasury is gonna start issuing um, securities, you know, bills at first like crazy, like hundreds of billions. And again, I tried to explain, you have to know MMT. I mean, I tried to explain that that changes nothing in terms of the total amount of assets, financial assets in the economy. All it does is change the composition of the assets a little bit. You know, you have less reserves and more T-bills, but T bills are like money. They're, they're just dollars with a very short term maturity and they have a have a nice a nice payment attached to them. So they've given up. It seems like today they gave up on their, uh, you know, Fed rate hike is going to be the end of the world argument, because, I mean, if any day was a day when that should have been uh, apparent in the market in terms of like you know, them selling, um, they weren't there. They weren't there. They were covering their shorts. And the irony of this is the Fed is going to raise interest rates again. I think that'll be what, for the 10th time uh, this month? And not the 10th time this month, but the 10th time altogether, they're going to raise it again this month. And I think, um, look, these fiscal flows, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna blow your mind. I mean, already the the deficit is like one point, almost one point two trillion. It's one point one something trillion. Uh, that's that's almost five hundred billion more than it was at this time last year, which means, I mean, another way to say that is there's been a net addition of five hundred billion of new financial assets into the economy thanks to government spending, thanks to the deficit. And people don't understand that. I mean, it's just, it's still kind of fantastic to me uh, or, or, or just like kind of crazy to me that despite so much evidence and you know, we had this period for over a couple of years, you had people like Stephanie Kelton, she wrote the deficit myth and all that, but this, and and everything she said was true. And all the things that have happened and things that I've been telling you guys, you know, that's all been true as well, but nobody questions it. They still stick to the old fashioned paradigm when they, they we think, you know, we're on a gold standard. I mean, Congress just went through this, like, how are we gonna, how are we gonna pass this budget deficit? We're gonna have to figure out some way, I mean, you know, it could have used the, uh, uh, the what's his name? Biden could use the trillion dollar coin, which by the way, that whole idea popped up on a, on a message thread, on a comment thread on Warren Mosler's site, I think back in like uh, 2008 or something like that. I, I was part of that whole conversation at the time. Uh, and I know the guy, you know, who he's, he's a, an attorney who found that detail in the Constitution and it's totally doable, but people think it's like a, you know, like some kind of a gimmicky thing. 
But nevertheless, you know, they, they figured this way out to raise the, uh, the debt ceiling for another two years. And I said that was, you know, that would be the criteria. That would be what would be necessary. And even with the student debt payments now, which are going to come to about $16 billion a month, you know, sure, we'd rather not have a $16 billion a month subtraction in, in the net flows. But the flows are so strong right now and primarily strong because of interest rate hikes. I mean, and I keep telling you guys that it, this is just the very early stages. I mean, we're going to continue to have a Treasury securities mature. The older security is going to mature and, and roll over with the higher coupons. And that's it's just going to, I mean, it's just like a curve that's going to keep on rising, maybe parabolically. And so, you know, <laughs> I, mean, I just... I look at this today and I'm like, you know what? I mean, this is fun. It's fun to watch because they deserve it. I mean, if you don't educate, and this is what, you know, this is the whole thing that I do. And it's why I want you guys to become subscribers because I put these numbers out every single day. Like nobody else does that. You can't, any, you can't find any other service, sorry, or other, any other place online that are going to give you these numbers exactly what these daily leading flows are. I mean, we I see it. We chart it. It's in my report. It goes out like, and it goes out via email every single day to subscribers. Like, you know, this is what came out of the checking account today. This is what flowed into the checking account today. I mean, you could see these trends so clearly. And if you have that knowledge, if you have that information, I mean, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna sit back comfortable in your outlook because you're not gonna be freaked out by headlines and things that all these other zombies get freaked out about. And they're getting freaked out because of lack of knowledge, because of completely because of ignorance. And I mean, again, it's deserved. It's, I mean, if you cling to some, uh, you know, crazy cultish belief or mythology and you refuse to look at, you know, the scientific reality of what's going on, I mean, that's, that's clearly like a type of insanity. I've said it before that monetarism is a psychosis. It, it's been around for almost 50 years now. It's a psychosis. And if anything, it has um, intensified. I mean, uh, Stephanie Kelton wrote an article on her, her Substack the other day saying that the deficit myth is hanging on by its, for dear life. In other words, you know, it got popular for a little while and now it's like right back to how are we gonna pay for it? I mean, it's just absolutely crazy. So, but the, the great news is when you understand what's going on, like I've been telling you guys, and when you could see these trends developing day by day, like not, like not sitting around and waiting for a report that told us what happened last month or last quarter, but day by day telling us what's gonna happen in front of us, I mean, you can't beat something like that, I'm sorry. And if you have the correct macro picture of the economy, I don't care what stocks you invest in, even if they're not the hot, you know, artificial intelligence things right now. I mean, value stocks, they're gonna go, it's gonna go up. I mean, the, the, the state of the economy will determine the state of the stock market. And if the economy is, is expanding, the stock market's gonna go up. It may uh, impact the rate of ascent of the stock market or certain sectors more than other sectors, depending on where those fiscal flows are really directed towards. But I mean, you gotta know this. You gotta know the big picture. If you don't know the big picture, I mean, it's just like, it's like I've used the analogy so many times of being out there a sailor on the open ocean without, you know, without your charts, without your compass, just kind of floating around, hoping you're going in the right direction. I mean, hope is not gonna get you there, folks. Hope is not gonna get you there. 
So go ahead and sign up for my report, MMT Trader. Go to pitbulleconomics.com and sign up. And there's also an MMT Trader Instagram page right now. If you go to MMT Trader, uh, you know, at MMT Trader Instagram, uh, become a follower because I'm going to start posting things up on there. All right, everybody. Have a great Friday. Maybe I'll see you over the weekend. Bye.